Hi, I'm Heinbach, and it's good to have you back. Welcome to the Patreon Q&A for September. And if you're wondering where the one for August went, that is because I made that one a live one and made it only available to the patrons. But since my voice is still recovering from the cold I had, I thought I would do this the regular way as I do these usually. Every month I have a sticky thread on my Patreon and everybody who supports what I do there can ask a question and I will try to answer it as best as I can on video. Let's get started. Daniel Tyson. How are you finding the Sensel Morph and MPE in general? How does it compare to the analog expressiveness of say the Seattle Lombardi Dierhorn or an acoustic instrument? I play woodwinds in concertina and I love those instruments ability to sculpt each note over time. I've been really curious whether an MPE controller like a customized morph would be the right tool to let me apply that method to electronic music. Huh, I really enjoy MPE but it's also such a such a such a non-standard. I mean, every company handles it different. Every door handles it different. If they support it at all, you have to hack your way around it. And I learned that with Fundamental. And there we focused on the Sensel Morph because it's the cheapest way to own anything with the name Buchler on it. <laughs> because you get the Buchler Thunder overlay. And I really enjoyed the expressiveness of that. It reminds me really of the Buchler Thunder, which is very good. And it didn't feel weird. I thought that Roly feels weird. And I felt, feel the Haken Continuum feels weird. <laughs> that comes as a, I love wood and metal and hard plastic. I come from a piano. So it's important to me how an instrument feels. And with Sensor, we were able to make Fundamental very reactive, but that did take some time. And you can get it to work on Roly and stuff like that. It works fine there, but again, it's always a little fiddly with MPE. Though, so after all that process of working with Sensor, I can say I really like the Sensor and I love what it does to the expressiveness of fundamental and other instruments that I have, such as what's the one by audio damage. I think I've got all the audio damaged ones now. They work fine with it. But yeah, you have to put up with that something like Ableton Live doesn't really support it. And comparing that to analog instruments, the Seat Lombard, especially the Zedrux, which uses piezos to get that touch, just feels a touch more direct and natural because of course there's no latency and you touch wood and it's a really physical thing. The wood bends, the piezo bends and that creates, yeah, the touch that you're getting. So you can blow on it and yeah, you can do so many things with that that are just, just a touch more reactive. So maybe a, con a piezo based controller would actually be cool. Like, uh, it does exist. Sheet Lombarde Shinth, look into that. Look into the Sheet Lombarde Shinth that enables you to have that beautiful Sheet Lombarde touch interface. Alex Cavalco, is there a visceral detail or moment from one of your favorite performances that sticks in your head? Also, if you didn't have music, where would you like to concentrate your creative efforts? Things that I remember that were striking, that was in a previous band I was playing and we were playing a tour. And for some reason, at least in two of the stops that we played, people started making out, which was crazy. I mean, one place, Hotel Shanghai in Essen, was a former brothel. So there were all these separés and they kind of invited you to do all kinds of things to the side while we were playing our electro punk wave outside. And the other was in a small club Wagenmeister, I think, in the middle 
of the tracks between Switzerland and Germany. So that also felt like a very special place. And it was interesting experience. So uh, I noticed that I was okay. Oh, and then later, yeah, it was confirmed <laughs> by someone in the audience. So that people felt moved to get it on while uh, we were playing. That was something that stuck. Music has been the deciding factor in my life since I was 15, and it's hard to imagine anything else. And maybe judging, I can only judge from what I, judging from what I loved back then, I would have tried to go into writing more or writing for something like computer games. That could be fun. And um, yeah, I probably would be more focused on writing because that is something that I really enjoyed also. But compared to the joy that you get by pushing air around while making music, writing is a pretty solitary and yeah, little feedback experience. It's also very lonely. So yeah, music has more of a direct reaction. Oh, well, I hope this answers your question. Phil Durant, I'm checking out some of your posts when you first start your Patreon tiers and you had a post about videos I'm working on back in July 2018. One of them was live improvisation techniques. Did you ever do that? There are various videos that refer to improvisation, but I could not find one with that title. As an improviser myself, I'm always interested in how people approach this. Maybe you did? Nah, I didn't. I didn't make that video. It's... My approach to video making is a bit chaotic. I mean, I have things that I plan for long, long times. So, and that are developing, but then I find something that interests me right now. And then I want to make a video right now, like a kid that goes to his mother and say, look, mom, I made this, I made this. Look how beautiful it is. <laughs> I just want to share the joy. So my schedule gets interrupted all the time because of that. And then there's sometimes not just enough time to do all the videos that I want to do. So something like this, was, which is something I really want to do still, so it's still on my agenda, yeah, takes some time to get made because it gets pushed aside, aside, aside. Uh, thanks to yeah Patreon mostly, I'm now able to dedicate much more time to videos and I'm cutting down on other work. So I'm doing a bit less theater, just also so I can stay more at home with my family, which is to everyone one of the best things. Not being away 180 days a year is a huge difference. There will be more videos and I hopefully will be able to tackle this one. It's just moved up in the priority list a bit. Pete Gostolo, you previously mentioned using shortwave radio for music making, but not being able to because of antenna limitations. What did you have in mind? And have you tried online software-defined radios? These might be a useful alternative. Yes, I have. Yeah, I have the receiver sitting here. It's a realistic DX200. And I just haven't gotten the antenna up high enough. It's one of those projects that I need to do and I need to get the antenna high up in the air and then I can hopefully find sounds. So the idea is simply to use a bandpass filter and this and maybe something other, I don't know, like a way to extract rhythm information from that. Uh, so I would be able to, yeah, just scan the airwaves, try to see and find something. There are good guides now on uh, the subreddit, I remember. And yeah, but still, just getting the antenna up, that's something to do, I, I still have to do. And I know of SDR and uh, software-defined radios, and I know there's one in the Netherlands that Hans told me about. But there's just something, maybe I'm just, I just want to do it with this nice, thing with the dials and stuff that project had to take a backseat as I'm still restructuring the whole studio I yeah and building a workshop downstairs Vox Machina I was curious on your analog process video about the recording method did you record the full song in a single take or by sections full song in one take that's was the whole goal just one yeah one take that's how I did it and yeah, the digital sold 
quite good and the vinyl record is also sold. So I think I will be able to give 350 euros to Berit, the charity I was doing this for. And yeah, this is a nice result of the whole video. Gus Elizondo, how do you care for your hair? Do you ever get tired of long hair? I don't really get tired of long hair. I, I like it. With video making, I now have no like cheat day. <laughs> where you're like, oh, it's still okay. No, I have to wash it every two days. And I use mostly biological shampoo. And basically the same stuff the kids have. There's nothing much special to that. So that's all I care for. And I got a good hairdresser. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Hamish McIntosh. Hi, Heimbach. Thank you for all the sonic goodness. You're welcome. Quick question. Are the loops from your how to create rhythm tape loops available to download at all? Many thanks, Hamish. No, no, they're not available. I actually made a track with that, so that's still that I still want to release. So I can't release those loops. I'm sorry. Michael Sullard, what is your preferred way to record your upright piano? Have you tried different microphones, placements? Yes, uh, I've tried many things. Like I had for the longest time, I had a Bierhalle piano, which was very clanky and honky-tonky. So there I bought two Toman T-Bone ribbon mics, the huge ones, Chinese rebranded stuff, really heavy, had a giant stand for that. And that took care of the high end of those. It made them Made, him, made the piano appear much softer. So I like ribbon mics to make a piano softer. But right now I'm bored with the whole, like put a ton of felt on the piano, make it dead. I want to have it ring more. So I try to capture it in the nicest, in the most concrete way possible. And therefore I'm using two Gefell 692 with M70 capsules. Basically this microphone with a, uh, SDC capsule. I would love to try it with this capsule too, the big one, but those are expensive. And I got this one in a trade, modules versus uh, the microphone or the capsule alone, which was good. But yeah, so I'm looking forward, to, or I'm looking for another one of these capsules. So then I could try it with the large diaphragm condenser microphone capsule that's nice and i love using gefell mics because yeah they are the east german neumann and they're never as bright as neumann as the newer neumanns which i kind of like sometimes oh one thing that i did i recently exchanged the capsules from m70 to m49 uh 94, I'm sorry, to M94, which were meant to have more presence for more distance recording, but I really like the amount of clackety detail they brought out on the piano. And yeah, so these two, left and right, are right now my favorite way to record the Bechstein Model 10 that I have here, but I also always have an MD21 directly to a Nagra 4.2, so I can easily loop it. And I'm using a sound level meter, the 2204 from Brilliant Care, to yeah, be able to loop it into something like the Morphogene also. So the piano has always yeah, three, four mics present. Jacob Stevens, you often focus on music making technology from the past, such as tape and test equipment. But I'm wondering if there's any music making technology that gets you excited about the future. New forms of synthesis, better DSP algorithms, new kind of instrument controllers. I'm astonished by how some things that only used to sound good in the computer, like granular synthesis, now sounds good outside the box. I mean that hologram electronics, are they called hologram electronics? Uh, their latest pedal, microcosm, that just delivers a quality of sound that I'd previously only known from high-end uh, standalone hardware units or, yeah, something in the computer. And now that's in a pedal. So that was like the latest, wow, <laughs> things have come far. It's not this grainy little affair anymore on a spin uh, chip. It is, yeah, it becomes really good. Reverb Nord. 
My question. When I became a Patreon, I was sad to see the final tier of membership is no longer available. Any plans on bringing it back at some point and any in the future? Uh, not really. It's just very time consuming and especially because of different time zones. It the points where you can meet is really rare. It's not just the meeting of the 45 minutes or hour or so. It's like all the stuff around it, the setting up, the talking. And then uh, it's not like I switch off. It's like I think about it before and I think about it after what we talked. I can't do this like a doctor and say, okay, point, 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 point. It's talking to persons to and thinking about what they do and thinking about that further so not right now i might do at a later point again justin Patrick moore heinbach it's good to have you back <laughs> I fell for that one. <laughs> and to be back in the q a i had a thought after listening to Erwin schmidt's new album of prepare piano music i was just throwing it out there that i think it would be cool if you did a how to prepare a piano video others might dig it too yes that would be fun that would be fun um, the one thing that kind of keeps me off right now is that I would love not an upright piano for that, but I would love yeah a proper grand piano because that was how I was taught to prepare the piano. It was simply in school. We put opened the uh, grand piano and then we could put on all the stuff that we wanted and then played it and it started to sound like some gamelan orchestra or some Tibetan percussion music and that was ear opening i think i was 17 and it was yeah just the regular ad advanced music class in uh high school so yeah that was beautiful to experience and it's simple physics in that regard because the bouncing motion of for example screws is tick 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 that's much more exciting on a grand piano where it's lying flat than it's on an upright which i have here so where it's like it's not so even if i so if i clang it in it will just deaden the strings more it will subdivide them and i would have to figure out something to make it as bouncy which is not that easy and it's just much easier on a grand piano so if someone has a grand piano in berlin and wants to let me do some preparation for that and is not scared about having to retune it after that would be lovely but i've played upright pre pia but i've played upright prepared piano in the theater before there is a lot of fun to be had still and i think yeah that was all the questions for this one if you've got a question you want to ask me just sign up to the patreon any tier will suffice and post it in the regular sticky thread and i want to extend a thank you to everyone who supports what i do on patreon you are the reason i can keep on making these videos and can keep on making more of them so thank you for that have a good night day or whatever time right now is wherever you are and i'll be seeing you in the next one <laughs>